This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Loops can conform to tempo changes because they have triggers built into them. And then when the tempo changes, those triggers get closer together or further apart. Well, the audio that we record doesn't have those triggers unless we build them in. And Beat Detective is a way to do that. So let's import some audio. Shift Command I, and I will import Beat Detective, convert it, say done, put it in the audio files, and build a track for it. Let's zoom a little bit so that we can see this fellow. And let me change my volume a little bit so that we don't get blown out. That should be about right. And let's take a listen. All right, so it has a nice groove to it. Let's see what we can do here. There is a way in Pro Tools, before we get to Beat Detective, to light this region, say Edit, Separate Region, and On the Grid. Now the problem is we haven't set the tempo for this thing. So let's use our system, and we'll go to Window, Transport, Turn off the conductor. I've seen this a couple times now. And I'm lining up, because I know this is a two bar phrase, the tempo, it looks like about a hundred is about right. I'm fighting my trackpad here. I'm just going to type in a hundred. And the blue line looks like it's about right. And remember, we verify this with the big counter. So, but not with Simpty. So, switching to bars and beats. And let's take a listen. All right, so that was me snapping along, watching this middle number change. And I think we're in pretty good shape here at 100. This looks like it's maybe slightly off, so we're definitely in the ballpark. It might be just a smidge off 100, but let's go with 100. So now this, and then back to edit and then separate region on grid. And we don't want any milliseconds of the pre-separation. And it actually found us a nice separation. So let's listen to one side of this. And let's listen to the other side. Okay, so I like this system because I'm in control of it. But let me show you the system where Pro Tools sort of takes control. So let's select all, and we'll delete them from the timeline and bring in our full version here that isn't chopped up. And we get to Beat Detective. I think I'll close my transport and my big counter because I need that space. We get to Beat Detective by going to the event menu or it's Command-8 or Control-8 on a PC, but it's the 8 on your numeric keyboard. And we get to this window. Now, Beat Detective can do five things that are listed here on the left-hand side. And it can do those five things to audio. If we switch to MIDI, it can only do the top two to MIDI. It can't separate the regions, conform them, or smooth the edits. So these five things it can do to audio. Now we know that detectives work by looking for clues, and Beat Detective does its detecting by looking at transients, the peaks in a sound file. So something with lots of attack and a little sustain, like a drum beat, or most things that are percussive in nature, those are ideal candidates for Beat Detective. Something that's harder to detect is a string section that's sustaining notes. So don't blame the detective if there aren't any clues in here for it to detect. And Beat Detective works best if the beat, if the tempo, is steady. It doesn't detect well if the tempo is all over the place. So let's try and detect the tempo of this drum loop. And we've already actually done it in the way that I prefer, but let's let Beat Detective take a whack at it. So we need to capture. So the workflow here is to select what we want it to look at, and then we capture the selection. And then we want normal detection. And we have a choice in analysis of high emphasis, low, and enhanced. 
High is good if you're maybe doing a hi-hat part that has a whole bunch of highs and very little lows. Low is good if you're doing a kick part that has a bunch of lows and hardly any highs. We'll just go with enhanced resolution. That's sort of what you use if you're not sure. And we'll say analyze. And there are no marks in here yet, but if I move the sensitivity, ah, I actually want to switch to beats and not subbeats here. And if I move the sensitivity, I start to see lines show up. And it's using the transients to determine the beats. And if I get far enough along here, that's about as far as I get. So it stops drawing beats at about the 20% mark. So let's let it do sub beats and see if it can find more triggers. More triggers will give you more accuracy. That's as far as it seems to like to go. Okay, so we'll see how it does if it has that much information. If you see a trigger show up in a place that you know is wrong, you can option click it and make it go away. I don't see any triggers in here. Like if I saw one right there or right there in a space and I know that that's really not a beat, then I would option click it and make it go away. So now that we've looked at the triggers, we'll generate the triggers. Ah, it's in manual tempo mode. Well, of course. So we'll go back to the window transport and put the conductor on and move this out of the way. I think we need to change this to bar two to get the entire region here. Well, let's leave it where it was at bar three beat one and generate these markers. We knew because we did it the manual way that the tempo was about a hundred beats a minute and Pro Tools has now looked at the transients and determined the same thing. It's 0.03 off here, but it's basically looking at the transients and telling me that it's 100 beats a minute from beat to beat to beat to beat in this loop. So you've seen two ways to do this now. You can do it the grid way, which I sort of prefer, or you can do it through Beat Detective. So now that we've defined these triggers, let's see what we can do with them.